Today we're going to talk about how to shadow a doctor. Although physician shadowing is not explicitly required by medical schools, most will strongly advise applicants to obtain shadowing hours. In addition to demonstrating your commitment to medicine, shadowing is a great way to determine whether a career in medicine is right for you. I'm Dr. Shirak Shemasyan, medical school admissions expert and founder of Shemasyan Academic Consulting. In this video, we'll answer frequently asked questions about obtaining a shadowing position so you can leverage your experience to become a competitive medical school applicant. Is shadowing necessary to get into medical school? Most medical schools strongly advise students to shadow doctors throughout college. Shadowing is the act of following a doctor while they see patients. During the majority of the time, you're a silent observer. You're not actively participating in patient care. Why do I need to shadow a doctor? There are two sides to this story. Medical school admissions committees want to be completely confident that you know exactly what you're signing up for. Because medicine is such a coveted profession, admissions committees need to be extremely stringent with just who they offer their limited seats to. On the flip side, shadowing is also extremely beneficial for your own personal and professional development. As I mentioned earlier, medicine is a true commitment and the last thing you want is to delve headstrong into medical school, realize halfway through that it isn't for you and have to pivot despite spending the majority of your undergraduate career as well as thousands of dollars investing in a committal field you didn't know enough about. It's to the benefit of both ACCOMS and you that you earn enough shadowing hours to get a better sense of what medicine is like before you commit. What is shadowing a doctor like? Unlike some of your other clinical projects or volunteer work, Shadowing a doctor is fairly hands-off. Your role involves being a silent observer where you'll do your best to hang out in the background and observe the day-to-day -day life of a physician as if you were a fly on the wall. Again, shadowing is largely a passive experience, but at times, the physician may invite you to become a more active participant. You may be asked to join in during the physical exam, listening to the patient's hearts and lungs, and even partake in some of the history gathering by asking the patient any questions you may have. In summary, expect to act as the physician's shadow. While shadowing, be vigilant and take good note of what life as a physician entails. If you have questions, and you certainly should, ask them during the doctor's breaks or at the end of the day. Remember, shadowing may be necessary in terms of medical school admissions, but you're also evaluating this profession on whether it is right for you. How do I find doctors to shadow? More likely than not, there are countless doctors in private practices around your community or in nearby hospitals and urgent care facilities. Unfortunately, these doctors can be difficult to access. They're busy professionals and setting up shadowing for interested students can be low on their priority list especially if it involves them having to ask their administration for clearance. Because of this, the easiest way to set up shadowing is to leverage your own personal network. Simply ask someone you know, whether it's a family connection or your own personal physician. Many students don't know any doctors personally or have connections to them, so don't worry if you're in this boat. You can go ahead and make these connections. A great start is beginning with your own pediatrician or family doctor. You have a pre-existing relationship with this physician. Chances are, they'll be more likely to hear you out and let you shadow them. After all, it can be flattering for a doctor's patient to want to enter the same field as they did. Of course, many doctors will still say no. Sometimes they simply don't have the bandwidth to accommodate a student. Still, getting in contact with them opens the door, and even if they personally won't let you shadow, they certainly have a network of professional colleagues they can forward you to. Another avenue to consider is through official resources at your undergraduate program. Reach out to your school's career center, pre-med advising team, or relevant professors. They certainly will have a network of clinicians that they could be happy to reach out to on your behalf. In addition, you may be studying at a university with a dedicated medical school or hospital on campus. Contact the medical school or hospital directly. Many hospitals, whether they're affiliated with a university or not, have volunteer offices or dedicated shadowing programs that you could entertain. If you've exhausted these avenues, move to cold calling and cold emailing local practices to ask if you can shadow one of their practitioners. I know, the idea of cold contacting sounds dreadful. It can feel so daunting to contact a clinician only to ask them for their time. What I'd recommend to combat this fear is to tell you that many physicians love the prospect of teaching and often don't get enough opportunities to do so. How to make contact with a physician you want to shadow. Once you've determined whom you'd like to ask, start by reaching out via email or phone. Either way, make sure to include the following information. An introduction consisting of your name, where you attend school, and how far along you are in your education. A brief outline of your career goals and interest in medicine, how you learned of that particular doctor, why you think they would be a good person for you to shadow, 
what you hope to get out of the experience, a direct request to shadow the doctor, including scheduling information. Don't worry, this can all sound really forced, but we'll go through examples of possible phone and email scripts you can base your conversation around. Before we get there though, if you're emailing, make sure to write a professional sounding email. And if you have one ready, attach your resume for the doctor to peruse on her free time. This will give the doctor additional insight to add to the body of the email. If you're calling the office, be ready with a 30 second abridged version of your message in case you're met by voicemail. Regardless of the medium, prioritize being polite and concise. Doctors are busy people and you've contacted them out of the blue asking for their time and attention. On that note, one big mistake I see many pre-medical students make is that they're far too restrictive with their own time. Remember, you're asking for the physician's time and attention, not the other way around. So be prepared to be flexible with your schedule. It's certainly fine to let a doctor know if there are certain times you simply can't be available, like if you're going out of town, but make it easy for them to say yes. Do your best to work around their schedule as much as possible, even if it means making a few compromises on your end. Similarly, begin planning your experiences well before you'd actually like to shadow to make time for doctors who might not immediately be available. We recommend making contact with doctors at least a month or two in advance. Many pre-med students shadow during their winter and summer breaks, so give these doctors as much time in advance as possible. It will make it easier for them to say yes and will give you even more time in case you don't find the willing physician right away. As promised, We'll now go over two email scripts, one for doctors you already know and one for doctors that you don't know or weren't personally introduced to. Here's an email script for a doctor you already know. Dear Dr. Bryant, I hope this email finds you well. Since our last visit, I have begun college at Williams College where I major in computational biology and am pre-med. My experiences as your patient as well as the eminent ones I've experienced in college have led me to develop interests in family medicine and cardiology. I'm hoping to explore these interests further by arranging some shadowing opportunities to learn more about a physician's day-to-day -day life. If possible, I'd like to spend some time in your office over my winter break, spring break, or summer when I'll be back in Buffalo. I'd sincerely appreciate your time and guidance. Please let me know at your earliest convenience. I'd be happy to discuss what dates would be convenient for you via email or over the phone. Many thanks. Ryan Rothberg. Here's an email script to ask to shadow a doctor whom you don't know personally. Dear Dr. Bautista, my name is Kevin Wirtz and I'm a sophomore at UCSD majoring in neuroscience. I'm writing because I'm considering applying to medical school and I'm hoping to solidify that decision by gaining a more intimate understanding of the profession through shadowing. Dr. Megan Chernoff, UCSD's neuroscience advisor, referred me your way, suggested that you'd be a good person to touch base with given my interest in neurology. Would you be willing to allow me to shadow you for a period of time in the upcoming months? I would be grateful for any amount of time that you could spare, whether that's one day or a few. I'll be out of San Diego during the first week of April, but I'm otherwise available. If you wouldn't mind, please let me know what days would work for you and I will rearrange my schedule to make those dates work. Should you need any other information, please let me know. I've also attached my resume for your perusal. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope to hear back from you soon. Best, Kevin Wirtz. How to ask a doctor to shadow over the phone. Quick note, we recommend reaching out via email first, but if you only have phone contact information or someone tells you to reach out over the phone, try this. Here's a phone script when leaving a message for a physician you already know. Hey Dr. Bryant, hope all is well. This is Ryan Rothberg, your former patient calling from Williams College. I'm a freshman pre-med student here studying computational biology and I'm calling because I'm hoping to set up some shadowing opportunities to learn more about the profession. I'm wondering if you'd be open to me spending some time in your office. Please give me a call back at your earliest convenience at 123-456-7890. If it's easier, you can reach me over email at ryan.rothberg, that's R-O-T-H-B-E-R-G-3 at williams.edu. Have a great day and I hope to hear from you soon. How much shadowing should I do? One important guiding question to ask yourself is, do you have sufficient shadowing hours to demonstrate an understanding of what being a clinician roughly entails? Quantitatively, your goal will be to shadow anywhere from two to four physicians for 50 to 100 hours total across multiple specialties. Just as important as shadowing across different medical contexts, for example, inpatient versus outpatient or operating room versus community clinic, is to show adcoms that you know what a doctor does. The more variety of practices you've seen, the more you can convince an adcom that you've done your due diligence in getting exposed to much that medicine has to offer. What are the best practices to keep in mind while shadowing? While shadowing a doctor is a largely passive activity, 
there are many things that you can do to ensure you reap the full benefits of the opportunity. I'd recommend bringing a small notebook, something you can fit into your pocket to jot down anything you'd like to remember or discuss with the doctor at the end of the day or during breaks. I'd also recommend transferring these notes, ensuing conversations with the doctor and your general observations to a computer document. These notes will provide invaluable material for application essays. It's never too soon to take down notes of these encounters. The more detailed you can be, the better when it comes time to explain to adcoms why you want to be a physician. It's completely acceptable for you to share your shattering experiences in your application so long as you omit or change identifying details such as a patient's name, date of birth, address, etc. If you have the luxury of shadowing the doctor for more than just a day, make sure you go back home, review your notes, and come back to clinic with pointed questions about the way the doctor managed particular cases or other general questions that you may have about the profession. In short, make sure you're prepared with questions so that when the doctor offers a couple minutes of his time to address them, you can take full advantage. Lastly, when your shadowing experience has come to an end, make sure to leave the doctor with a personal handwritten thank you note. You'll come across as an appreciative, mature adult who recognizes the value of the doctor's time and attention. I can't stress this enough. It's a tiny gesture that can go a very long way. So how do I request a letter of recommendation from a doctor I shadowed? Requesting a letter of recommendation should be rather simple if you've built a positive relationship with the physician you shadowed. Do note that if your experience was strictly passive, it may be difficult for your physician to write you a strong letter of rec, especially given the fact that the doctor knows little about your interests, work ethic, and other pertinent qualities. Just because you shadow a physician doesn't mean you must get a letter of recommendation from them. That said, if you're hoping for a letter of rec, it's best to ask relatively soon after your shattering experience is over. That way, you'll remain fresh in the doctor's mind as they're writing for you. You can store these letters of recommendation using services like Interfolio until you need them for your applications. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. And if you'd like to learn more about the med school admissions process, including a whole section on selecting the right extracurricular activities, click the link in the description to get my free comprehensive guide, How to Get Into Medical School. The strategies in the guide are the same ones we use to routinely help students get into schools like Harvard, Johns Hopkins, Mayo, and UCSF. All right, thanks again for watching. See you next time.